Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you 07 December. Um, dark Monday here in Geneva. December is always a tough month as far as light and happiness, whatever. But we got a fair load of snow this weekend, so that was a that was helpful in the joy column. Uh, we're thankful for that. But now we got to focus our minds back to these markets. Quiet, quiet open. Um, S&P's popped just briefly up to 05. Now we're back at 86. We closed at 90, so it was no great shakes. We had some squirrely shit in um, Sterling. Uh, turned it down to 134.07. It's no real big deal, right? I mean, we, we closed at 28. This is just Brexit nonsense. Um, no real news out today as far as economic releases that are of, of worth anything. So we're, Brexit will be part of the uh, part of the volatility mix. Got to watch out for what these what these uh, monkeys say um, about fishing. Imagine, like after all these years, Brexit's being held up by fishing. Oh, mercy. Anyway, uh, looks like a turn bar in Sterling, but technicals don't really mean anything right now. This is all Brexit driven, right? 150 up, 150 down, 150 up, 150 down. What this chart does tell us is we are in a uptrend and so buying low ones is the key is the way just looking with a forward looking lens here is 132.84 going to break at some point you kind of think so right just because of the way this has been trading so you know buying dips in cable is incredibly difficult as is selling rallies or just the cable fade is is a difficult way to trade it um, but I would say on the next buy, be patient. 132.84. Um, there's going to be some risk down below there, so let that get cleared out. And those next 50 points, so between 132.80 and 132.30, probably a good place to buy. Dollar Swiss. We took uh, took a swing at some longs late Friday after non-farms, just because of rates. Um, and a little bit of the sort of micro price action reminded us of turns, these four hour bars. Could never really clear any interesting levels. 24 is the pivot. Up through 24, this becomes interesting, could be a turn. Um, that obviously means euro dollar has turned. We have plenty of skepticism with this uh, idea. The one thing in our favor is uh, ECB this week, and they're watching, right? I still, in my mind, they don't care about Euro Dollar at 121. Euro opened at 117. It opened its life at 117. It's traded down to, I don't know, 84 cents. It's traded up to 160. 121 is like right smack dab in the middle nobody cares about euro 121 I would say they really start to care about euro above 131 even 135 uh, this becomes an issue um, so I don't know I don't know what they're gonna do but the market is long certainly the professionals um, are long euro so there could be um, some pressure to tidy up risk heading into ECB. Uh, when I say pressure, the market could pressure could put pressure on any of the week longs. And so, what's a week long? It's a terrible term. A week long is just a long who has a tight stop, or a long who's the last in, who whose stops are close. Where are those stops going to be? This chart's not super helpful, to be fair. Um, 
I'm going to say if you remember the price action at one at one twenty oh three. I'm going to say that's where they're going to be, so right below 120. Uh, 130 points away, that's a long way. I don't know. <clears throat> These are things we're thinking about. Dollar Swiss um, is the horse for the turn because this might be rates driven, and Dollar Swiss will react to rate, rates better than any other uh, currency, especially rates, higher rates in a risk on framework. Let's look at ZB. Bang. That's a hammer. Two fucking massive hammer can candles. Anyone who grew up on a farm and spent time wielding a hit, a sledgehammer, which I did plenty of, splitting a lot of split a lot of wood in my life. That is a fucking sledgehammer. Bang. Out of nowhere really, right? Because the first move was up after non farms and then bang. Yields are dancing up here, 173. The point of no return is 176, 177. It's 100 in 10s. So we're watching this closely. And if this does break, it's going to be hard for the dollar to weaken um, if U.S. rates start dancing higher. So we'll see. We'll see. Dollars are we watched it very closely through 115 for through 1515 on um, Friday. Real tight risk parameters there, and it was pre non-farm, so we cut that very quickly. It was a very professional scratch, we would like to say. Um, this could go either way now, right? Risk on pushes it down, but higher U.S. rates, which are really really bad for emerging markets. Um, these guys are naturally short dollars, and especially South Africa, where their own local rates are so low right now. Um, Got to be careful of this now. We don't really get excited until 1550. Uh, we're square now, just watching, but a couple different scenarios are now swirling around in our head. You guys should start swirling scenarios in your own heads. Um, and the main question this week is, are rates going to drive the bus? Mex, still on its knees. Um, imagine gold's all right. I mean, I imagine crude is all right. 46.06, yeah. Uh, this could turn and just do some sideways work. I'm not, you know, you can sell high ones in dollar Mex, I think. Um. I don't think we're going to get back up through 20, but we could have easily get up to 90, 95 today. So if you're short dollar max, you might want to tidy that up and trade it a bit. Aussie not doing anything. L waiting for the turn up here. Kiwi, same thing. We played short side Kiwi on Friday for some joy. It was very stubborn. Um, here we are at 70.40 kind of right where we were but Thursday is a turn bar Friday is a confirmation you can sell high ones in Kiwi I don't know what the story is there but it looks like that fucker's turning dollar cad 69 low the low from like I don't know three years ago was 83 this low here 83 um, these lows here 38 so we're right in the middle of nowhere in Dollar Cad. They had really strong uh, employment numbers. Wouldn't, not necessarily interested in fading this at all. I don't really know what's going to happen in Dollar Cad, but um, certainly it's got to be stretched at a few certain levels. But um, looks pretty robust. The loony. Let's take a look at gold. This little pivot here, they were dicking around with it, right? We're looking for that hourly close above 50 to confirm the next leg higher. Um, traded up to 52.7 uh, after the non-farm illiquidity 
it was zipping around there, right? 50 paid, 40 given, 52 paid, 38 given. Um, hourly close above 52, this thing continues to march higher. Even with rates going higher in the U.S., we like gold higher. Um, could be a little bit sort of volatile in a sort of like consolidate consolidative way here. Um, you know, there's gonna be more resistance up at 60, uh, but there's certainly gonna be support down at 30. So like. Is this like a 30-60 range on a March higher? That's kind of what we have in mind. Um, but watching that 52, well, we're just watching for the hourly close above 50. Equities we talked about. It's bid. No point in like getting super bearish yet. Um, it's stretched. The metrics are stretched. Uh, price to sales. Total capitalization to GDP. And just the chart alone. Like if you just asked me about this chart, since it didn't say this was the S and P's, I would go, "Wow, it's pretty fucking stretched, right?" Bang, 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 bang. Tried to turn no in your face. Um, looks bid, and it's December. Um, less short sellers in December, right? I'll get into this some for another chat, but if you're an institutional guy and you get paid it on the 31st of December, um, you're not doing much in December. You're not putting any big bets on, right? You're just tidying shit up. So it's a lot of short-term trading in December, a lot of tidying, and the long community kind of leans on this and tries to sort of cajole this thing to close on the highs so they can get paid more, basically. Um, we can talk about this in another video, but not ready to jump on the bear side. I'm super cautious on the bull side. Uh, what's the range going to be today? I don't know, 60, 10. There's a little head and shoulders here that a lot of people are going to be watching down through 82, but that looks like a trap to me. Um, we'll see. Anyway, as you can see on the tactical side, as far as new trades are concerned, not too much on my mind. We're nursing a little bit of long dollar Swiss. Uh, we'll be selling high ones in Kiwi, watching basically the bond market. Um, we're not going to break trade gold through 50 because it's like an hourly close we're looking for. We don't think there's like going to be some burst of buying. Um, but overall, it looks like kind of a quiet Monday. Be watching the news about Brexit, but not trading that because we're just too old and slow to trade Brexit news. Anyway, I've said a lot, 13 minutes, about nothing, really. Um, I guess the main question for the week is, what's going to happen in the ECB on Thursday? And the second question is, do we have a new driver of the bus, uh, which are U.S. rates? Lots to think about, as always. Good luck out there, people. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.